This stuff's like candy to me, man. What is that? It's a flux capacitor. Oh my God, you don't even have me. How many gigawatts are you? Oh, 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 oh. Man, I'm always nervous at this part. You remember when we did the truck camper, the Victron system? Work. Yeah. It worked. <laughs> All, right. All right, we're gonna try out a heat gun on it. <sighs> Cut. <laughs> I gotta figure out what I did here. Now you get to learn from my mistakes. Is it a little excessive? Yeah. But that's what I do is excessive. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike. We are the Runaway Parents. So uh, I kind of got something special for this video right here. If you recall, I told you about the adventure trailer, trying to decide what I'm gonna do, Victron equipment or EG4. Well, I made my mind up. Let me show you what I got going on in it so far. You know, I had the Anchor F3800 in it and I took it out. So I went ahead and went with the watt cycle batteries that you've seen on my previous review. These are the 24 volt, 314 amp hour monsters. They're 8,000 watt hours a piece, each of them. And right there is where my equipment's gonna be mounted. There's my panel box, my four gang 20 amp receptacles there. I'm gonna have a 30 amp that's gonna come outside the trailer over here on that side on the outside so I can use my shore power plug from the camper and plug into it and get a little boost from these batteries to my system in the camper. Anyway, that's what I got going on inside there. So let me take you in here and show you what I'm doing. So excuse the mess. There she is. I'm going with the EG4 6000 XP. I am so excited about this because you know I got the 12,000 XP on the Eco-Worthy batteries running my shop. Y'all, this trailer is gonna be absolutely sick. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited about this. Probably more excited than I should be. This stuff's like candy to me, man. It's like Christmas, you know? The anchor that was in there was doing great. You know, it was running on the 800 watt Renogy Shadow Flux panels. It was doing great. And I had a 48 volt uh, Timgo battery as an expansion battery on the anchor. Man, it really r did great. But I was kind of tearing up my anchor. Cause you know, it was on the wheels and I had it strapped to the wall. And it's just, it was kind of rough on it like that. So I wanted to go with a fixed system. So I decided to go this route. Is it a little excessive? Yeah. But that's what I do is excessive. I love the solar, man. I just love it. I love having a lot of power, no generator. And uh, this is going to fit the bill perfectly. I'm also going to have a charge verter in there that I can charge the batteries with. And if you know anything about the charge verter, EG4 charge verter, I can plug that sucker up to 240 and charge those batteries up at 5,120 watts. I can put that in there or change the cord out on it and plug it into a generator and put 2,000 watts in it. Like I said, it'll have the Renogy solar panels. These 800 watts will feed into one side of the EG4 6,000 XP, which is not much. That open circuit voltage will kick it off. I've already checked it. I'm gonna have a ground deploy plug that's gonna come out of the side of the trailer and I've got like a thousand watts of ground deploy panels I can put out when we're camping somewhere. I can get about 1500 watts probably all together in good sun going to those batteries. And it's gonna come in real handy at this uh, meetup that we got coming up because a lot of the campers out there don't have solar and they're not gonna be running air conditioner. So yeah, people can plug into my trailer and I can run everybody. I could probably run two or three campers off of my little trailer here. And uh, Larry will be there with his, he can run a couple. But uh, I think we're gonna have all the power we need. So come on, let's get started installing this. It's gonna be a great time. Let's get this plastic off of it. I've already unboxed it, as you can see. I am just 100% impressed with the EG4 product line. I absolutely love it. You know, I have the EG4 server rack batteries in my camper, the 12,000 XP here, and now we got the 6,000 XP. It's a little heavy. I think it weighs like 50 something pounds which is, you know, not, not horrible. If you do purchase 6,000 XP, you're gonna get, the, in the box, you're gonna get your owner's manual, your Wi-Fi dongle, communication co uh, cable, and a parallel cable, where you can parallel multiple 6,000 XPs together, which is pretty cool. And you gotta have a template in it. So that'll help you practice fit up on a wall wherever you're gonna install it at. Man, one of the key things I love about it, absolutely love, it's, it's all in one, guys. Completely all in one. You're gonna have, your PV shut off right here. You got a breaker here for load, grid, your generator, on off switch for your battery, your breakers are in there. Everything all in one. MPPT controllers inside it. It's basically your whole Victron system all in one box right here. And it is 48 volt. For those, those of you that don't know, it is 48 volt. 
All right, so let's take the template inside there and get it fit up, see how we're going to put it, where we're going to put it. We'll go from there. All right, so this is kind of what I'm thinking here. I think that looks pretty good right there. Little pilot holes here. Now we got to go get the inverter, bring it in here. I've got somebody for y'all, man. I, I need help. I, I just need help. My beautiful special assistant right here. How y'all are? She's gonna help me with this. So this should be interesting. No, she's a big help, I'm not gonna lie. So let's get that inverter and get it in there. What is that? It's a uh, canooter valve. Canooter? Sounds like a dirty word. No, it's the, actually it's the flux capacitor. You're so stupid. It's 1980. I'm actually probably a little more excited than I should be to be putting this up on the wall. Like, it, it's my happy place. <sighs> oh my God, you don't even have me. Well, how many gigawatts are you? <laughs> <laughs> These screws are temporary, just to hold it up here for right now. I will be through bolting. <laughs> Would you just look at that? Oh, 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 oh. What? Whoa, would you look at that? That is not what you expect when you open this little trailer door. <laughs> He's silly. Now we need to take the cover off of it and we'll start wiring it up to the breaker box and wire our battery in. We'll get this thing going. All right, here you go. There's a look at the inside. There's your PV inputs, generator, grid, load, your battery terminals for hooking up the battery, dry contacts, and your communication cable lines right here. Your ports where you plug in communication. And there's all your knockouts. Your battery knockout right there. We'll be using that one. And we'll be using the grid, the grid and PV. There we go, man, this, I'll tell you what, EG4 just got it going on, you hear me? That 6000 XP is such a versatile piece of equipment. Even if you're doing off-grid, hybrid, you're feeding grid into it, people are putting these in their fifth wheels. They're foregoing Victron equipment, pulling other Vic Victron equipment, and putting the EG4 6000 XP in their fifth wheels. Very versatile piece of equipment. And for one price, I mean, I still, don't get me wrong, let me back up. I love Victron. I love my blue. This is kind of a no-brainer in a tight area. You know, if you're limited on space and you don't want to wire up all these other components, it's all in one. Everything is inside there. Your breakers, your cutoffs, everything. It's all, all in one. MPPTs. So it's, if you want a 48-volt system, that's kind of the way to go, man if you got the room, you know. The watt cycle batteries, they have an app where I can uh, monitor them, but I, I did put the uh, Victron shunt to monitor because they don't have communications. So I can't communicate with the inverter, so I can just monitor through that shunt of exactly where my batteries are at. I got them wired in series for 48 volt. Anyway, let me get to wiring this stuff up right here and hopefully we get some juice going to this thing here in a minute. bring you in here for a little look now guys this is super easy to wire it up do a little research I mean this is so incredibly DIY after you do it a few times you make yourself sick that you're even ever scared to do it but absolutely be careful what you do you are at the end of the day messing with electricity so do your research learn I'm not gonna tell you what to do I'm gonna tell you what I did this ain't a how-to video this is just how I did it Looking here, you're going to get eight gauge copper wire right here. The black is my L1. The red's my L2. And back here on the neutral is my white. And over here is my ground going to PE, L1 and L2. Got it running through here, back up to my breaker box. Got my ground bar over here, my neutral bar over here. Colors still coincide. Coming up, we're going to have my ground right here, L1 black, 
L2 red and my neutral. And that's feeding my neutral bar for my breakers. And there's my Romex coming up from my switches I wired in. I've got each one on there, its own 20 amp breaker. There you see both of them coming up here. My hot line going into that breaker, that 20 amp breaker, and that one going to that 20 amp breaker, the other one. Both neutrals, both grounds right there. Simple, simple, real simple. I've got to get another knockout um, gland to go on this one. On this one right here, I didn't get one, so I need to come back and get one. I'll just have to unwire this and put it in there and fix that. But for now, to get me going, this is going to work. Now we're going to get the battery wired up. I've got the um, two watt cables right here from both these at Signature Solar while, while I was there. So I'm going to have to cut my negative one to make up for the distance in my shunt. But it uh, won't be long now. We'll be putting power to this sucker. All righty. She is wired up, fellas. So let's, uh, let me go to my Victron app. Let's double check the voltage coming out of our battery. 100% voltage is 56.1. All right, let's check the voltage of the lugs right here. 56.17 on the meter and 56.18 on the Victron app. So that tells you how accurate that Victron app is. I mean, we're within a millivolt. What's a millivolt? Don't you worry about it, Daddy. I'll tell you later. Man, I'm always nervous at this part. You remember when we did the truck camper, the Victron it did system? Work. Yeah. It worked. <laughs> it's just nervousness when you first flip the switch. All right, so we're going to put juice to it through the batteries. All right. Now we wait. Uh, let me see what, I, what we got here. Womp, womp, womp. Okay, not really sure what happened there. Everything seems to be working now. For some reason, these two batteries in series, I was when I flipped the battery switch on, it was giving me an overload, not an overload, but a uh, hardware warning on the BMSs. On the watch cycle app after going through checking everything double checking triple checking all my connections was right so i tried it again and it did it again i turned everything off reset the, um, the app and flipped it again and now i'm getting voltage 56.16 i've got the breaker on nothing's tripped so we're going to try this again at first it didn't like being in series but uh i don't know it seems to be working now so we're gonna uh see if we can power everything up all right, our inverter's on. All right, inverter is on, so let's put our load on. And let's flip these breakers on. Now let's hope I got everything right. We'll plug something into it, see if we got power. All right, we're gonna try out a heat gun on it. <sighs> Cut, <laughs> I gotta figure out what I did here. So I got it working. Now you get to learn from my mistakes. I completely forgot, it just slipped my mind, and I knew better. I'm running two batteries without communications, so they won't communicate between the inverter and the batteries. Doing that, you have to be sure you set your inverter to lead acid. Once you set it to lead acid, it was throwing a warning I wasn't happy because it wouldn't get communications because it was set on lithium. When I switched it over to lead acid, everything started working. We got power now. Everything's working as it should. Now I just have to go in there and uh, set up my Wi-Fi dongle and go through the app and I'm going to set up the charge voltages, charge, low discharge, everything. I can set everything up through the app. It will be able to control everything. All right, so it's getting a little late. I spent a little more time on it than I thought I was going to. So let me get things cleaned up out here and uh, I'm going to jump back on this in the morning and that's where we're going to pick up. All right, good morning, everybody. It's the next day. So I'm out here. I got up this morning. I mean, really, I couldn't sleep at all last night. I had this thing on my mind and watching videos. I do want to say, mention one thing. I did watch Will Prouse's video last night on the Watt Cycle 314 amp hour 12 volt batteries. The parallel problems they were having with them, timing in parallel and discharging unevenly. So it got me kind of concerned about this. So I put a load on it last night and got up this morning and checked it. They are dis these are discharging equally on both batteries. When I check the app on both batteries, they are discharging equally. So with the 24 volt, 314 amp hour batteries, apparently that's not the problem on them. I haven't experienced it on these batteries, but it was con a concern of mine. I do respect Will Prouse's uh, opinion on batteries because the guy really does know his stuff. I haven't experienced it on these, which I haven't put them in parallel. I got them in series. Everything works great in series with them. So that being said, the only issue that I did have 
BMS wise with them going in series, like when I shut my system down in the first initial connection, when I flip the battery switch on on my inverter, the, on the app of the watch cycle battery, it'll give me a warning, hardware warning, and it shuts down. But when I shut it off and do it again, everything will kick back on and it'll work properly. It does that every time. I don't know why it does it on the first initial startup, but when I start it up again, let it reset, it works fine. That is the only little hiccup that I've seen with it. Other than that, you know, the app, it'll, um, when I go to connect to the battery through the battery's app, it won't connect on the initial connect. It'll go back to the other screen, to the home screen. And then I have to connect again and it'll connect. Everything takes twice for it for some reason. Not real sure on that. So far, everything is working great. They're draining equally in series. Of course, you know me, there will be update videos because I do. I am gonna run it, I'm gonna run it hard. So everything is running good. I will leave you guys some links in the descriptions for the, the batteries. Go check out the batteries. Uh, you know, they got the 12 volt, 628 amp hour batteries, which those are equally beastly batteries. I still believe in Watt Cycle. I love their product. You know, just like any other company, they got bugs to work through. And in the past, I've seen when a problem is has arisen with them, they do correct it. I think everybody's going to be good on that area. But like I said, I'll leave descriptions for the EG4 Signature Solar. Man, go check them out. Anything you need for solar, Signature Solar is your place, man. I'll leave a discount code in the description, help you save a little bit of money, and a discount code for Watt Cycle. So that being said, what are we going to do, baby? Sign off. We're going to get out of here. We got a big, man, I got to start wrapping this up because we got to get this sucker ready to leave, to go to that meetup. She's on my butt, y'all. She's on my butt. Thank you guys for uh, watching this, man. I appreciate it. We'll see y'all on the next one, man. Bye.